Since Sam Bankman frieds FTX Bitcoin Exchange's demise, inquiries have focused on the role that Alameda Research and its CEO, Caroline Ellison, played in the company's bankruptcy. Please find out more about Caroline Ellison and how she came to be at the FTX's Collapse Center by watching this video. Is it safe to keep our funds? Let us dive fully into this video to find out more. Firstly, how did Caroline Ellison get to the Collapse Center at FTX? Caroline Ellison, now 28, is the daughter of two MIT economists economist and a Stanford mathematics graduate. She also worked with Bankman Freed at a brokerage firm called Gene Street Capital. Bankman Freed, like Ellison, was brought up by professors, and the two of them shared a commitment to effective altruism, the belief that one should use one's wealth to support charitable causes, with the most significant potential impact on improving people's lives. According to Coindesk, the couple had an on-and-off relationship. A few times after, Bankman Freed left Jane Street in 2017 to start his Alameda Research head hedge fund. Caroline Ellison followed suit, taking what she termed a blind leap into the unknown. She quickly rose through the ranks to become one of the company's most influential investors. She later acknowledged on an FTX-related podcast that she found dealing with equity somewhat unnerving upon her arrival at Alameda in 2018. According to Caroline Ellison, the decision she took was influenced primarily by the fact that it compelled her to think about a different approach. She made this assertion because she had more trading experience than many Alameda traders, despite having worked at Jane Street for a year and a half. Caroline Ellison went further to say that she had the idea when she entered the industry. There is no field in which she wouldn't excel. But the reality was that there were still a lot of things in the crypto realm of which she knew nothing. According to the Wall Street Journal, Alameda was a prominent trader in in the cryptocurrency field and routinely traded on FTX's platform. Even though Bankman Freed established Alameda and was the company's biggest shareholder, he later gave up management of the company's operations to concentrate mainly on his role as CEO of FTX, a cryptocurrency exchange he established in 2019. During its heyday, FTX Exchange accumulated a valuation volume of more than $32 billion, making it the third busiest cryptocurrency exchange in the world. Managers at Alameda and FTX were were under pressure as the two companies expanded rapidly. The Wall Street Journal previously reported that those in higher-up positions at Bankman Freed were regular users of stimulants, including cocaine and amphetamines. In a tweet from the previous year, Caroline Ellison stated that there is nothing like frequent amphetamine usage to help anyone understand how stupid a lot of regular, non-medicated human experience is. Caroline Ellison was promoted to co-CEO of Alameda alongside Sam Trabuco in October 2021. In August, 2022, when Trabuco stated on Twitter that he was stepping down from the CEO job, she succeeded him as CEO. Sam Trabuco noted in an interview that managing Alameda alongside Caroline Ellison had been tough and laborious and consuming, but would remain on as an advisor. Caroline Ellison said that Sam Trabuco had been consumed by the situation. In the fall of 2021, the prices of cryptocurrencies were very close to all-time highs. However, by the beginning of 2022, the digital currencies were plunging, and many investment and lending companies operating in the industry were experiencing financial strain. The beginning of November this year saw rising reports of concerns about the financial stability of Alameda and FTX. To summarize, Binance CEO Cheng Pen Zhao, in an interview with Susan Lee of Fox Business, said the outcome of the competition's due diligence exposed a chaotic financial sheet. For this, Binance has decided to cancel its prior attempt to purchase FTX. The two businesses were so intertwined that their mutual dependence managed to bring about their demise. To stabilize Alameda's financial situation, FTX had loaned billions of dollars worth of client monies from the exchange to the latter. Panic-stricken investors attempted to pull cash out of FTX, but the company could not meet demand and declared bankruptcy. The Wall Street Journal reported that in a video meeting earlier this month, before the firm and FTX filed for bankruptcy, Ellison notified Alameda employees about FTX diverting client monies to help Alameda meet its liabilities. Allison further mentioned that Bankman Freed and other top management were informed of the decision. When the company and FTX met, it still needed to file for bankruptcy. Next, in other related news, FTX kept the money, crypto, in a crypt and not in a vault. Neil Ferguson stated in a profile published on the website of Sequoia Capital, which will be used as a required reading and journalism classes for
for the foreseeable future that Sam Bankman Freed would never read a book because he has a healthy skepticism for books. He went further to say that he does not want to say that no book is ever worth reading, but he genuinely believes something very similar. This mistake is not fatal because Bankman Freed, the founder of the cryptocurrency exchange FTX that no longer operates, will probably have a lot of spare time shortly to devote to reading. The matter was presented to Sam Bankman Freed on the Bloomberg podcast Odd Lot, who was asked to explain the concept of yield farming. Here is what he had to say. Yield farming is simply borrowing crypto tokens from another person in return for your own governance tokens, and then swapping the tickets you borrowed for higher yielding DeFi, decentralized finance instruments. Neil Ferguson's justification was that the amount of money placed within the box gave it the perception that it carried something of great value, as evidenced by the fact that many believe it should contain the funds. Who are we to judge whether or not they are correct in their assessment? Because of this, you should know that the price of the governance token skyrockets. Its current market cap of $130 million directly results from investors' enthusiasm for its product. The wise investors immediately put $300 million additional money into the box, and from there, it can only increase continuously. Because of this, everyone's financial situation has improved. It's the wacko West now, he said, so forget about the Wild West. Neil Ferguson went further by saying that at the end of September, he went to a conference where one of the sessions was dedicated to cryptocurrencies, and Bankman Freed was one of the speakers at that session. When situations like this arise, he makes notes. He said his first impression was that Sam Bankman Freed had a continual jiggling knee issue, as well as an F-word issue. He noticed that Sam Bankman Freed used the word frequently. Neil Ferguson narrated that the moderator inquired with courtesy about the purpose of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. And Sam Bankman Freed answered by saying something that was not helpful. He answered, The industry needs to get its together. Among his other remarks, Sam Bankman Freed said he did not want crooks on the system and added that a lack of regulatory clarity was to blame for more than half of the problem. SBF was reported to be worth $1 billion during the conference. As of November 10th, the deficit between FTX's liquid assets and its commitments was $8 billion. For a while, it was thought that as much as $477 million had indeed been looted in a hack. In reality, the Securities Commission of the Bahamas, where FTX was based, obtained all of the remaining assets in a virtual wallet. Genesis and Galois Capital, two prominent cryptocurrency exchanges, have each revealed hundreds of millions of dollars in FTX funds they cannot withdraw. There are a lot of people there. Many customers who invested their funds in SBF are presumably out of all the money forever. Perhaps they thought their cryptocurrency was safe in a vault. The catch is that their crypto is hidden away in a locker. In 1998 and 2008, the Federal Reserve stepped in to prevent inevitable collapses from developing into full-blown financial crises. It was necessary to seek support from the Treasury Department in Lehman Brothers. Some things are literally too big to fail and not going to take place in this location because neither FTX nor even crypto is large. A more appropriate comparison would be the economic collapse of the dot-com industry in 1999 to 2000. However, the mass extinction event brought about by Web 2.0 did not involve a significant amount of fraud. A better analogy is Enron for the current state of the cryptocurrency market, a bubble coupled with deceit. However, the rise and fall of Bankman Freed cannot be adequately captured by any of these contemporary analogies. To have any hope of comprehending what has just happened, one must travel back in time, around 150 years, to read Anthony Trollope's illuminating novel The Modern Way of Life, 1875. August Melmont, who Victorian society lauds as a financial genius, not because he is one, but because he provides the elite the prospect of quick profits, is the protagonist of this tale, which narrates his phenomenal rise and fall. The 1866 bankruptcy of Overend, Gurney & Company was a source of inspiration for the story. August Melmont's life story is chronicled in this book. We have now gotten to the end of this video. Kindly subscribe, click the notification bell, and drop your thoughts in the comment section below. We hope to see you in our next video. Bye!